Hello, students, staff, and families of Sierra Plumas Joint Unified. My name is Lindsay McIntosh, and I'm the founder and executive director of Musica Sierra. What is Musica Sierra? We are Sierra County's very own performing arts organization dedicated to music education and community engagement through world-class performances and world-class educators. Today, I'm here to introduce you to a new music education series that I've created just for you called the Digital Stage Series. During these unprecedented times, the traditional assembly or field trip to the Symphony Hall is not an option for us. So to ensure that we are continually exposing our kiddos to some amazing cultural experiences, I've created the Digital Stage Series, bringing world-class musicians straight to you. Over the course of this series, we will be featuring 30 incredibly talented musicians that are leading artists in their field from folk to jazz to classical arts to solo to chamber music these artists will perform for you as if they were here in person these videos will be made public for you once a month on our youtube page also we will be sending them out in a newsletter so parents you guys can enjoy them at home at your leisure and kids you guys can watch it again if you feel so inclined today i just wanted to take a quick moment to just say many of these artists are very dear friends and great colleagues of mine that I met while I was freelancing in Manhattan. So I'm very honored that they've all taken time out of their schedules to build something incredible just for you. So thank you again and I hope you enjoy. Hello. Hello. Students, hello staff, hello families of Sierra Plumas Joint Unified. My name is Major. Hello, everybody. <laughs> My name is Major Connery, and I am an artist living in Berkeley, California, which is about four hours west of you. It is also very hot here today. <laughs> I'm sure it's hot where you are also. Um, I am originally a classical musician. I trained as a classical pianist for many years. I also played the oboe in symphonies and orchestras, just like Lindsay McIntosh. And when I went to college, I became a vocalist and I studied opera for a whole bunch of years. But after college, I became very interested in electronic music. And now I use my voice and my fingers to make music this way. My instruments now look like this. This is a synthesizer. This is a synthesizer. This is also a synthesizer. This is a teeny weeny synthesizer. And this is a synthesizer. <laughs> this is a super old one. This is from the 1970s and it's called a Farfisa. I can't really lift it very well. I'm going to show you one kind of music that I like to make today, which involves vocoding. Vocoding means that I'm going to use this synthesizer to multiply my own voice. So right now, if I play, There's no, there's no music coming out because I have the volume totally off. But I can still use the information being sent by these keys to modify my own voice and create additional voices. So I'm about to press this one key here and you will hear now, whoops, <laughs> magic. Now, now there's, there's another, another voice there. there. It sounds, sounds like, like a little, little robot, robot voice. voice. I'm going to turn, turn the, the reverb, reverb off. If I press a second key, now you can hear that there are two robot voices in addition to my own voice. But I can play more than that. I can play with a choir of voices. It's really fun. So fun. <laughs> okay, I'm going to play a song for you, 
It's called This Kind of Love. This kind of love does not deserve that name. Feeding on such stultifying stone, a pit dark phantom in a greedy. Divided raves and ravens dropping its insatiable appetite. With each meal it wants to see how far before we break, how much we'll give and how much we'll take. Hiding each other from the other bluff, tossing barbs, hurling lies, never enough, never full. While we stand here, each to a ledge, this anger. The dull hope terrified to be loved, each wishing that the other feels the same. Applause, applause, applause. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, one of the reasons that I like playing with a vocoder so much is that I'm a solo artist. So I can only make as much music as I can make with, you know, two hands and my feet and my face, which is sort of limiting. But with electronic instruments and with the vocoder in particular, I can create a choir of sound which means the possibilities for what I can make are almost endless. I'm going to play another song now um, that uses a little bit more of the tricks in my arsenal. Um, you'll hear that I'm using a drum machine and a bunch of synthesizers in this next piece. It's called He Had Gone.
Thank you so much. I'm going to let you go because my time is up. But if you want to reach out and ask me any questions about anything, I'm very easy to find. My name is Majel, M-A-J-E-L Connery, C-O-N-N-E-R-Y. And I really hope I get to meet you in person sometime. Bye-bye. Hello, students, staff, and families of Sierra Plumas Joint United. My name is Sarah Stone, and I am so excited to be making music for you today. I am a cellist and gombist, and I live in Queens in New York City. I'm originally from Seattle, Washington, and I started playing cello as about eight years old, and I love cello, and so I decided to go to school at Rice University to get a degree in cello performance. And from there, I got introduced to this weird instrument called the viola da gamba, or the viol, uh, in my first semester, and I fell in love with it. Uh, a group of friends and I, we'd get together and play chamber music, uh, and I just really loved it. And so I wanted to study it further, but I also loved cello, so I wanted to study cello further. So I went to the San Francisco Conservatory of Music, where I could kind of do a little bit of both. And then from there, I specialized even further at the Juilliard School in New York City in historical performance. And what historical performance means, it means that if I'm playing Bach, uh, Bach would have known the instruments uh, that we're playing on, the way that they're set up, but he also, we would be playing in the styles that he would know. And so I will be sharing a lot of Bach with you today. I started a project at the very beginning of quarantine in March, uh, when the city kind of shut down here in New York, which was, I'm calling Bach every day. And I have been recording a piece by Bach, typically a Bach chorale, uh, every day for over 180 days now, six months, uh, in my apartment, although I just moved, so in both of my apartments. And yeah, it's been a really interesting journey for me. I've learned so much as I've been doing it, and I just can't wait to share these chorales with you today. So the first piece that I'm sharing with you today is a Bach chorale. And it's typically four parts, so soprano, alto, tenor, and bass, the four voice types. And then sometimes, to make them extra special, Bach would add instrumental parts in addition, and these are called obligato parts. Imagine though, so Bach, his job at the St. Thomas Church is to teach a choir school, uh, lots of little choir boys, but then also to create weekly a uh, piece, a cantata, that is multi-movement. Uh, it's sometimes 15 to about 30 minutes long, and these are for choir and also for instrumentalists. And he's writing one a week for a period of time, like three and a half years from 1723 to 1727. And in those three and a half years, he wrote 150 of those cantatas. We think he probably wrote over 300 in his lifetime, although some are lost. And all of this is really cool because it's also 300 years uh, in 2023. It'll be 300 years from this period of time that Bach was in Leipzig. So imagine back. 300 years, and this is the sound you would have heard.
chorales that I'm going to share with you are a set. And when you listen to them, I want you to listen for the fact that one is going to be played by cellos and the other one is going to be played by viola da gambas or viols. And these are actually two different families of string instruments. So the cello is of the violin family. So we have the smallest, the highest pitch, the violin. Then we have kind of a middle viola. Then we have the cello, which you guys will see. I'm sure many of you know. And then we have the double bass, which is the biggest one, and so it plays the lowest. And in the viol family, we have actually the same thing. We have a treble viol, which is the tiny one, plays up high. Then we have a tenor. Then we have the bass viol. And this is also sometimes called viola da gamba, which means that it could have an extra string, a seventh string instead of six strings. Um, and then we have this thing called a violone, which is huge. And the main difference you'll see is that on my viols, I have frets, and on my cellos, I don't. And this is because the viol is actually coming out of the lute family, so it's almost like a guitar, and then they add a bow, and so that's how it becomes a bowed string instrument like the violin. And so first, we're going to listen to the first chorale on cellos, and then the second chorale on viols. And I want you to listen, uh, how do they sound the same? They're both string families, right? But then how do they sound different? Like what, what does the sound sound like and how are those two sounds, like what is the texture, what is the timbre, uh, how do they sound different to you? So what did you guys think about those two chorales? For me, listening to the gambas, I think the gambas create a sound that is it's a really interesting texture. I think the sounds blend uh, even more so than the cellos in some ways. Like it's a tighter texture. It sounds to me like a reed organ, uh, which you should check out on YouTube, see what that sounds like. Uh, but the cellos, I feel like it's more lush. It's a warmer sound. And I want to point out one really interesting thing about my cellos. So I'm actually playing on two different instruments. Uh, and I have my normal cello, my normal Baroque cello. And then I have the second instrument. And this instrument is called a piccolo cello. And the interesting thing about my particular piccolo cello is that it was built in 1723. Now, this is the same year, like we said, that Bach started writing these Bach chorales in Leipzig. So Bach would have known this sound. He actually wrote for piccolo cello and some of the other cantatas. Um, and it's this weird sound because the top string of the piccolo cello is very skinny compared to the other ones. And so it's a higher string and its role is melody and it can play a pie and it's very virtuosic, which was something that the cellos were less so at the time. Um, so it's a cool kind of otherworldly sound that Bach would know, but we don't know so much today. And it's very much featured in the last chorale that I'm going to share with you today. So this chorale, we actually know because it's the same chorale that we listened to at the very beginning from VWV 75. But now in VWV 100, Bach, he had his choir and he had his strings, right? But he's adding in percussion and he's adding in horns. And I'm going to play the two horn parts on piccolo cello. So listen for them. They'll be in the middle of the screen. Um, yeah, and it's just this really lively, fun version of this particular chorale tune. So I hope you enjoy. I want to thank you so much for listening today. And if you're interested in hearing more Bach chorales, find me on YouTube and look for Bach every day.
Hello, students, staff, and families of Sierra Plumas Joint Unified. My name is Laura Rubenstein Salzito, and I'm so excited to be playing for you today. I play the violin, and I will be talking to you about my two different violins. I play both modern and Baroque violin, and I'll show you the difference. So here are my two instruments. You can see that they're pretty similar. Overall structure is the same, but the fingerboard, which is this black piece, on this instrument is much shorter. So if I actually hold them, you can see that this one's super way shorter, and that's because people didn't have to play quite so high back then. This is an older instrument. And this instrument has a chin rest, as you can see here, which makes it a little bit easier to hold. The strings are made out of different material, so these are gut and these are metal which will sound very different um, the tuning is different so here is, is the difference between the tuning Ooh. so this one is higher so that'll make just things um, sound a little brighter and louder but this is nice and calm which is really fun so this instrument was made in 1690 in in Brussels a long time ago this one was made in 2001 I think in Walnut Creek which is where I am right now <laughs> funny enough um, the main difference is really in the bows so if you can see this is a Baroque bow and this is a modern bow this is what you'll see in a normal symphony orchestra this one is curved the top one is like a bow and arrow the bottom one is the opposite way which will make things different. So here is a close-up of the frogs, pretty different. And here of the tips, also pretty different. So I like to use this funny analogy. This, uh, this modern bow here is like driving a Cadillac, which is like very comfortable and nice. And this is like driving a Porsche, which is just way more fun. It goes around turns really fast. So. Um, a little bit more about myself. I've been playing the violin since five years old, which was a long time ago, 25 plus years. Um, I grew up in a family of musicians in Sunnyvale, California, which is not too far from where I am now. Um, I perform regularly around the Bay Area and I teach privately as well in Walnut Creek. I met Lindsay at Juilliard. We were doing our master's degree and um, that was a few years ago. So that was really fun. I'm gonna be playing for you some Telemann. Telemann was a Baroque composer and he wrote 12 fantasies for the violin and they each have several movements. So I'll be playing fantasy number nine, um, which has three movements, Siciliana, Vivace, and Allegro. Siciliana is slow and beautiful and luxurious and Vivace is lively. Allegro is fast. So we'll start with that. And this is on my Baroque violin. That's my specialty.
play you one more short movement. Before that, I just wanted to say that I love this music because it's so uplifting. It's just like happy and fun and danceable. So I think that's what we need these days. Um, the next thing I'm gonna play for you is from his 10th fantasy. It's an allegro um, and it's just really happy, which is awesome. So I hope you like it. Thank you for listening and I hope you enjoy the performance.